The Stein's anti-submarine sonar gear suddenly went US, unserviceable. She sailed home. Petty Officer Ira Carpenter went down to examine the underwater dome. We noticed that there were some, some uh, quite long scratches. The longest one, I would say, was about four feet long. I had never seen anything like this uh, before, and I quipped to my SW officer at the time. I said, look here, it looks like we have been ta attacked by... Uh, uh, this is a small piece of the no-foul covering that was taken from the sonar dome of this ship. In many of these cuts were found teeth or claws, such as this one. And it's apparent that whatever did this damage grasped the dome and ripped all the way through this rubber covering to the metal below. It must be from a squid because nothing else that is known in the ocean has structures of this kind. This doesn't rule out something that we haven't found yet because undoubtedly there are creatures in the sea that are not yet known to science. What does this squid your mom and my reproductive organs all have in common? The answer is deep sea gigantism. It's not mythology, it's science. So join me as we follow the science to learn the secrets of how ships defended against Krakens, and the reason your mom can't fit in a sedan. The year is 1722. You're a young sailor of the seven seas. You're absolutely riddled with herpes and syphilis. You definitely have scurvy, and you probably have stage three skin cancer. Also, you're missing a leg. You're not exactly Timothy Chamelet, but you can still pull salty wenches at the port and father dozens of illegitimate children across every continent. How, you may ask? By lying. You tell people you lost your leg in a fight with pirates, because that sounds better than explaining how you got an infected splinter in your little toe and you needed amputated from the knee down. You didn't lose your left testicle because a rat bit it off in your sleep. You lost it to the tooth of a shark that was the size of your shit. Being a respected sailor was all about street cred. You may be an old man with no teeth, no arms, no legs, no eyes, and no testicles because they both got eaten by rats. But if you can spin a tall tale, you're the toughest sailor in the bar. It was common for them to have tattoos of their feats of bravery to boost the credibility of their stories. A tattoo of a mermaid, a pirate, or a sea monster you encountered was just enough to keep the this post is missing context caption from being added at the bottom. This is similar to how distinguished gentlemen in today's society may also get a tattoo to aid the story of how they bested a foe in a duel. So, what about Krakens? Was it all just made up so some loser without a finger could get street cred? Absolutely not. Kraken deniers are an extremist group that has been growing in fringe corners of the internet, such as National Geographic and Encyclopedia Britannica. Kraken deniers believe that there are no such thing as sea monsters. Kraken denial began as early as 1745 when the East India Company began stationing soldiers at every bar in the Caribbean. These men served as independent fact-checkers. Sailors spinning tall tales about Krakens would be scrutinized for missing context in real time. If a tall tale failed the fact-check, then the misinformation would be taken down via lead to the forehead. Lies about sea monsters in the Atlantic Ocean scared sailors. And that was bad for supply chains. And that was bad for business. It's just good business. To combat this rampant censorship from the East India Company, squid truthers in the Caribbean created the ACLU, 
The anti-cephalopod libel union fought censorship of squid tails throughout the British Empire. Benjamin Franklin is quoted as saying, Kraken theory is more than an issue of free expression. It is the essence of self-government. It's better to die on our feet than live on our knees. He died of syphilis one week later. It wasn't until 2006 that the first footage of a giant squid was captured on video. This video changed everything. Deep sea gigantism is when sea creatures reach immense sizes due to cold, deep environments with limited food and a lack of natural predators. For example, single-celled amoebas that are normally microscopic can reach lengths of 4 inches long. Deep sea gigantism can affect everything from crabs to isopods to squids. This is why it's reasonable to assume that not every story about krakens was false. Were most of them fake? Absolutely. But not all of them. We know that giant squids do exist, and biologists have no clue just how big they can get. It's estimated that they can almost grow as heavy as your mom. The biggest squid ever observed was 43 feet long and weighed almost 2,000 pounds. Squids have been known to attack humans. And prey much larger than themselves which we know by the scars found on sperm whales. It's completely possible that a sailor has died to a giant squid before. It's also completely possible that a rowboat could be pulled underwater by an animal with 40 foot arms that weighs a ton. But could a giant squid really grow big enough to attack a ship? Surely all of these drawings are wild exaggerations, right? You know, I once was a kraken denier extremist like you. Until I stumbled across this footage of a navy ship that was forced to dock after a giant squid damaged the metal dome around its sonar system. In 1976, the USS Stein returned to harbor to find four foot long scratches, as well as barbs left embedded from massive tentacles. We now know that giant squids exist, we know they've attacked large ships, and we know that their tentacles are strong enough to scratch and even impale metal. I think it's reasonable to suggest that a giant squid absolutely could have attacked a wooden ship. It could have damaged the hull. And it even could have pulled a small sailor off the deck if lucky enough to grab one. The size was likely exaggerated in the stories and drawings. However, the event itself could be very real. So if you see a Kraken Denier in the comments section, I want you to bully them. And if you want to save space from the Kraken Deniers, 